All right, folks, this is Professor Ledoux, and I read um, everyone's responses to the syllabus quiz, and I was pretty impressed, actually. I thought all of you did an outstanding job. I think there, there was one area where a lot of students didn't really understand completely what I had hoped they would from the syllabus, which had to do with the area of scholarly grit. I mentioned this in class. It's a psychological construct um, that's composed of three dimensions, and the three dimensions are deliberate practice, conceptions of learning, which means that an individual understands that learning is like a marathon and not a sprint, and it takes a lot of time, and then optimism. And I don't know that everyone really understood, or in fact, anyone really understood what the term deliberate practice means. And there's actually quite a bit of research on that, so I just thought I'd spend a couple minutes to describe it. And so here um, on the screen, I'm highlighting the foundational paper that was published in 1993 by Erickson, in which it was entitled The Role of Deliberate Practice in the Acquisition of Expert Performance. And so if you're interested, I'll be happy to get you that paper. It's quite long and involved, but interesting. Um, So the main point here, first and foremost, for someone to succeed in terms of carrying out deliberate practice, and remember that's just one third of being gritty, but it's very important, is you have to be motivated. Um, you have to be motivated. It's not easy to do deliberate practice. So I guess that's not that surprising, but it's worth saying. Um, another component is that the challenge level has to be appropriate. So the task... And that means whatever you're doing that we're calling deliberate practice needs to account for your pre-existing knowledge such that you can actually understand the task after a brief period of instruction. So in the problem solving studio, we try very hard to meet this criteria. We give you problems that we think are just a little bit too hard for you to do on your own in a reasonable amount of time, but that you can do in, in the context of a team of other students and with mentors and myself running it about the room, answering your questions and helping you think through things. But you also have to think about how to do this when you're outside of the class as well. The other thing, uh, or the second thing that's extremely important in order for it to be count as deliberate practice is that you have to have feedback. You know, you take, you're carrying out a task where you're trying to develop expertise in something and you need to receive immediate and informative, in other words, useful feedback. And again, that's why we have two outstanding undergraduate TAs in the class at all times and myself so that we can try to help you get feedback on how you're performing and how well you're carrying out the task. But when you're out on your own working on homework, you need to do this as well. You need to reflect on what you are finding challenging and what you don't understand. Jot it down before you forget it and then get feedback on it. Uh, in other words, go, reflect, go back to the textbook or get help from another person to help you understand what it is that you don't understand and to help yourself improve. The next thing is repetition. So once you are being reflective about the task that you're undertaking, you're not just doing things mindlessly, but you're doing it for a purpose. And the purpose is to gain an expertise, to reflect and get feedback on where you're still weak and to purposefully carry out additional tasks that are designed to help you improve in those areas that you're weak, you repeat it, that cycle of activity. But mindlessly repeating a task is not deliberate practice. So the results of deliberate practice, where you create well-designed tasks to stretch you um, and to address weaknesses that you've identified before, and that you do it in a reflective way and getting feedback on that performance, what happens is when you meet all these things, you get an increase in accuracy and speed of performance, cognitive, perceptual, and motor tasks. And of course, for our for this course, it's primarily, if not completely, about improving the accuracy and speed of your cognitive performance with respect to solving engineering problems. Just to reiterate, repetition alone does not work. Um, putting in a tons of hours solving problems without reflecting on them and doing it in a pur purposeful way will not improve performance. Erickson showed in his work that 
people with a lot of experience doesn't necessarily mean that they perform at a high level. It's only people that have been carrying out deliberate practice for a long time that have high performances or high quality performances. Again, you need adequate feedback. That's very important. Mere repetition will not lead to improvement. Finally, to sum it up, in contrast to just playing around, deliberate practice is a highly structured activity. And as the goal is to increase improvement, uh, I'm sorry, improve performance. And very specific tasks are created in order to overcome weaknesses. So do not shy away from your weaknesses. Don't do what a lot of students do, which is to go back to the things you feel comfortable doing and say that you've done your job. Your job is to identify what you are not comfortable doing and become comfortable doing it, become efficient and expert at it. So that requires careful monitoring in order for you to do that. And here's the key. The truth is this just is not inherently enjoyable. It's hard work. You, you need to do it in good bits of chunks of time and your ability to increase, to do this for longer chunks of time will increase over time. But it's not easy, it's tough work. But the reason why you should be motivated is because it will improve your performance in the long haul. All right, that's it for deliberate practice. We really want all of you to achieve at the highest possible level, to walk away from this course feeling really good about the effort that you put in and to feel good about the results, to feel satisfied with it. I think it'll serve you really well as you move forward in the major and beyond. But simply putting in a lot of time is not going to do it for you. It has to be what counts as deliberate practice. You have to realize that even if you are doing deliberate practice, it's going to take a long time for you to really master the stuff that's... Uh, conception. That's the appropriate conception of learning that you need. And stay optimistic. It's going to be hard. As I said, it's not enjoyable. There will be a lot of times when you feel like you're just not getting it or you're, that you're failed or you failed to achieve your goals. But you have to keep realizing that if you keep plugging away and keep carrying out deliberate practice, in the end, you're going to learn a lot. So be optimistic. Talk to you later.